And this here was like our house. Whenever I have dreams where I'm at home, it's always here. I'm, I always wake up in my bedroom here still. And I haven't been, I haven't been here for like um, 19 or 20 years. It was something that I excelled at in the environment that I was, that I was raised. Uh, so I wasn't that good at sports or any of that kind of stuff. But everybody kind of responded to my, my comic book thing. But this is, this is my bedroom. I called my bedroom Fanatical Studios. Both of my parents, they worked in the steel mills in the 70s. When I was born, the mills went away. So they didn't have a job, really. The, the Crips and Bloods were like a big deal. And I spent a lot of time indoors there. It's like practicing my craft, learning to draw. You ever hear that term white flight? Like white flight sort of, sort of happened in this area. We stayed and we, we figured things out. But yeah, this is the neighborhood that I'm from, dude. So I always wanted to make a comic within a landscape of hip hop, of early hip hop. I like 1970s New York imagery. Ultimately, I just uh, decided, no, you know what, I'll, I'll tell a very linear story about the history of hip hop when I got the idea for the actual structure of hip hop family tree. Is this house is nestled between several playgrounds where hip hop things were being done in a very fortunate position for me as to just get indoctrinated in, in hip hop language. The similarities between comics and rap music. Things like alter egos, you know, you have Peter Parker's Spider-Man, you have Daryl McDaniel's DMC. For me personally, I, I really uh, appreciated the fact that both art forms were sort of bastardized by the mainstream and looked at as chaff, as, as crap, um, because I kind of like to make parents nervous. The lightning bolt image, man, is, is an icon of, of comics in a big way. So I had to get that on there. And I feel like my comic is an answer to all of that stuff because I don't think that a Wu-Tang Clan comic where they're ninjas fighting demons, I don't think that's as super heroic as a bunch of Staten Island dudes who overcame obstacles to achieve massive success. Like, like I think that's a cooler story personally. So I just kept it going and just, just have never stopped hip-hop is like the four elements so you needed to get graffiti you had to get the DJ you have to get the MC and then you have to get the people dancing and stuff like that in the last panel of a comic strip when they deliver the punchline the characters like legs like pop up but in hip-hop language like we don't know what's going on behind the record player like this guy's obviously doing some kind of b-boy move you know some sort of breakdance maneuver <laughs> Every Thursday night we hang out at the B-Boys studio while they practice their dance moves. DJs come through, cutting and scratching records at a super high level. And I just sit there uh, working on my comics. It's almost like there's like this energy transfer that happens between everybody. It's a high point of my week, to be honest, to just hang out at the dance party. This joint was incredibly important for my creative growth um, just because the, the, the area was just real crazy in the early 90s. And there wasn't much opportunity for me just, just in the neighborhood. The first five years of my kind of creative life, uh, I worked drawing comics. I didn't write them. I drew them for a man named Harvey Picar, who's considered kind of an underground comics legend. And we put together that Beats comic. He gave me my first gigs, man. My first professional comic dollar comes from this guy. Say it again, Bill. You know, we've known Bill for, you know, over 10 years. And I, so I was like 20 years old and showed him my work. And he had all these interesting suggestions and of different kinds of work that I've never considered before. Uh, and it would like open up different, syn get synapses to fire. It's almost like a spiritual place. Because if you talk with my other cartoonist friends, they would say the same thing. All of our work has probably advanced uh, probably by like five years where it would be without 
being around Bill, talking with him. And like, you know, somebody like Ed obviously has crossed a lot of boundaries. Musical forms and, and comics have a lot of different parallels. And, and not only do they have parallels, but then they can support each other and broaden the audience for comics. Now it's possible to create your own work and you know, make a living off it, and that's the goal. Be independent, call your own shots, follow your own vision, but not starve to death, you know, so that's, <laughs> that's the goal. Like my, my day job, it zapped my energy, so I couldn't really like produce work. There was like a year, year and a half where I didn't draw comics at all, and that was the only time in my life. But ultimately I had a couple G's in my pocket, and I just had to quit. I gotta give it a go right now, because I'm still young, I could, I could, I could screw up and it's okay because I still live at home with moms. Um, and then it just kind of snowballed and, and worked from there. You know, it's paying my bills, no problem. And it will be for the foreseeable future. But that's anomalous. That's like, like, like I, I know that I'm lucky. So what I'm saying is basically in comics, there's not enough money in it to listen to anybody. You should just do what the heck you want to do. I got this apartment and I've, I've spent six months in it, hardcore working. The creative people that come through, they get it, they get it. But uh, whenever I bring like, a girl over or something like that, uh, they always make fun of me and say things like, um, you know, from the look of your place, you can't tell that you're an artist or, or anything like that, whatever that means. Uh, but I, and I can't defend myself just because, you know, the space is very utilitarian and and I don't put much thought into uh, the decor. Crazy. There were always holes in the, in the walls too, here and there. And whenever I draw interior, interiors of, uh, of apartments and stuff, I draw, I draw holes in the walls. And my, and my dad is like, why do you always gotta put holes in the wall? I, when I would draw the house, this house, when, when I was a kid for school assignments, he would always be very embarrassed by me drawing the cracks in the wall. It obviously wasn't this freaking bad, but... It's not, it's not heartbreaking to see it this way. I still think it's pretty cool. Like, the heartbreaking thing would be as if um, it just gets plowed over. Thing. You know, I, I still harbor the idea of making enough scratch to, like, grab this back off of the people who, off the organization that owns it fun to watch happen sort of before my eyes. I'm sitting here and I'm drawing stuff and I'm, I'm not impressing myself, but the work's getting better. But with that does come a lack of satisfaction constantly. So that's like the one downer where it's just like, like I, I don't know if uh, many cartoons could be like truly happy no matter what, just because it's like, it's not, you, every page you have an opportunity to create the best comic page ever and you fail every time but you're doing all right you, you know you 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 you're progressing you're learning there's a yin and yang to it like this this is what makes mom proud this right here is the money cuz that, that that's going to go on um you know that'll be in my obituary dude i got to become a um, new york times best selling author it's ridiculous. There must have been an off week in publishing that week.